As a world, we have two challenges. Number one, we need to really reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Number two, we still have a huge development challenge. A lot of people in this world live in places that are very poor. A lot of them do not have access to electricity or clean cooking fuels. We need to find a way to marry these two challenges. How do we provide economic opportunity and growth in lots of parts of the world that still really need it? And so we picked three different places to study. Vietnam, the Indian state of Gujarat, and Ethiopia. What does the energy transition look like in an emerging economy? And to what extent can we achieve decarbonization? To what extent can we rid ourselves of our dependence on fossil fuels while maintaining our living standards? There were a lot of places, including poorer places, that were able to make significant strides in changing the energy systems without having to sacrifice growth. In fact, doing it while they were growing rapidly. Ethiopia, to begin with, started from a very different position than most other countries in the world because they generate most of their electricity using hydropower. And so they're not trying to move away from coal and oil and gas. They're just trying to figure out how can I grow without having to rely as much on these things. And even today as we speak, Ethiopia is in the process of starting up one of the largest hydro dams in the world, the Renaissance Dam. So this is part of the country's strategy to exploit its natural resources, including water, but also provide economic growth and energy in a way that doesn't increase greenhouse gas emissions. Gujarat has an outsized role in the Indian economy. It is one of the most industrialized states. Gujarat was one of the early adopters of renewable energy in India. They were trying, before in most other states in India, to incentivize the development of wind and solar. And they were able to do that because they had a healthy electricity sector, because people were getting reliable electricity and they were paying their bills. And number two, they were willing to offer generous incentives for people to come in and build private power generation facilities in wind and solar. Gujarat also stands out as a case study in the use of natural gas. Gujarat has an outsized role in the Indian gas market. It accounts for a greater share of pipeline connections, of industrial energy use, of natural gas vehicles. It is also a case study of a place relying on natural gas to power its industry and therefore economic growth. There's a huge industrial clusters all along the coast of Gujarat, petrochemical facilities, refineries, LNG import terminals, all based on natural gas. Vietnam had an early focus on electrification, uh, a priority that really started throughout the 1990s of connecting every single person to the grid in Vietnam. They have relied excessively on coal-fired power generation. So they are one of those countries where economic growth has meant energy growth and has meant greenhouse gas emissions growth. And recently they've had some extraordinary success in attracting investment in solar power generation. And they did that by creating the right environment for private capital and also by offering generous tariffs for investors to come in and place facilities in Vietnam. Every day it becomes easier to choose the lower carbon option because the cost of these technologies is coming down and that makes it easier for anyone, whether it's the United States or Vietnam or Ethiopia, to go for the lower carbon option. Institutions, markets, and government focus really made a big difference. When there was a political commitment to achieving an energy goal, things happened. And that is a lesson that translates across the three places and it really translates around the world.